every garden has a few really challenging spots, but lucky for us, nature is clever. And there are plants adapted to almost every environmental niche. That means if you can learn to recognise where those microclimates are in your garden that match nature, you can find the perfect plant. First up, hot, hot, hot. Lots of plants love the sun. And in fact, they need it to fuel their growth through the process of photosynthesis. But when you amplify the heat of the sun in a paved courtyard or a rockery, you can get into some trouble. Plants that are really happy in an open, sunny position suddenly can cook. So you need to look for things that are naturally evolved to cope with that really hot, reflected heat. I saw this rock isotome growing in a rock crevice on top of a mountain, Lianganook, near my house, and I knew it was a definite contender for the garden. It copes with months and months of reflected heat, and in the garden, it flowers right through those warmer months. I'm cautious about it, keeping it away from the path because it does have caustic sap, but really, it is such a fantastic plant for a hot, reflected heat spot. When it comes to heat-tolerant plants, Australia's Eremophilas have to be some of the best. There are nearly 300 species and many of them come from the most arid and hot regions of the country. This is Calberry carpet, which is a bomb-proof ground cover, but there are forms, colours, foliage and flowers from all different parts of the arid regions of Australia. And the name Eremophila, well, it loosely translates to I love the desert and I reckon they'll love your little paved courtyard as well. And our beautiful everlasting daisies. There are species that occur in all parts of the country and many of them relish the heat. It's freezing. True cold can be one of the steepest learning curves in the garden. Personally, when I moved from the relatively frost-free city to an area at really high altitude, I lost about 20% of my most reliable plants in the first winter time. The consecutive frosts and the cold winter was just too much for them to take. But many gardeners also have a cold area down the side of the house that gets little sunlight or warmth. So I have found some of my plant solutions by looking to the hills. This is Coria Lorenziana, and it is a species with about six or seven different forms that occur in quite a few different habitats across the east coast of Australia. This one was collected in Kosciuszko National Park, and it is a beautiful upright shrub to about three or four metres. You can see these beautiful pink tubular flowers, of course, typical of a Coria and really, really popular with the birds. But really, I reckon this is an incredibly handsome shrub and one worth a try in the coldest of spots. Another favourite I've found is the snowy pymelia, Pymelia nivea from Tassie. It occurs on rocky outcrops at altitude. It's tough and beautiful. Whew, it's dry. Australia is one of the driest continents on Earth and as a result there are plenty of Australian species to choose from for a dry climate garden. But even those of us in higher rainfall areas can have a really dry microclimate. Common spots might be under the eaves of the house or even where the house is adjacent to another one quite close. The rainfall just rarely gets in there. And I reckon this is a great group of plants to try, the Fabaliums. They're really underused. They look very beautiful. Many have this coppery stem with a lovely grey-green foliage. It has a lovely texture to it as well. And then in spring, they produce produce an incredible cluster of little flowers. There are also lots of different forms from ground covers to shrubs and if you prune them they will be even more compact. I reckon they are worth a shot. No matter how drought tolerant a plant is, it's not going to cope with the dry the day you put it in the ground. So make sure that you water until established. Wet, wet, wet. While most plants like a little water, too much of a good thing can actually kill. As that water fills up the air pockets in the soil, it can drown the root system. So to choose plants that are going to cope with seasonal inundation, you have to choose really well. 
There are lots of species that grow in permanent bodies of water, but for a garden spot that gets seasonally wet, you need to choose really carefully. Now, looking to the sides of rivers and streams and lakes is a great place to start because those bodies of water do fluctuate throughout the year and throughout different seasons. This is one of my absolute favourite plants. This is Leptospermum brachyandrum, and it is a tea tree, a beautiful silver foliaged weeping form. As well as the gorgeous white flowers and foliage, it has a lovely multi stemmed habit and gorgeous peeling bark. Another plant up the back there, that is Banksia roba. Now, it might shock you to think of a Banksia growing in a swamp, but that is exactly what it can do. It has a fantastic large foliage and large flower. And over there is another beautiful protaceous plant. It's a Lamatia. Again, they like to grow in a cool, moist spot, covered in flowers, almost like a grevillea. They're popular with the insects and the gardener. Wind is such a common challenge in many gardens. Lucky for us, Australia has an enormous coastline, which means there are lots of plants to choose from for windy conditions. Anything with the word coastal in front of it, well, it's a good chance. This is Banksia integrifolia, the coastal Banksia, and it occurs all the way from Queensland right down into Victoria. And that means with such a wide distribution that there's a lot of variability in the forms. You see this one from Bermagui, it's reaching for the sky. It is an upright towering tree, whereas this is a more dwarf compact form shrub. There's even ground covers and of course hedging varieties. In the middle you can see one of the coastal classics, that is the Albany woolly bush. And it comes from Albany in Western Australia where it's buffeted by the Indian Ocean on one side, the Southern Ocean on the other. It is fantastic in a windy site. There are a few tips to establishing plants well in windy conditions. The first one is to start small, because you can imagine if you're a big plant, you put in the ground, not only will you dry out quickly, but moving around in the wind can stop those roots, making it into that new soil and establishing. And the other thing is not to plant a windbreak. You, in fact, want to plant a wind filter by using a mixture of different species. If you plant one row of something, it's just as likely the wind will jump over it and slap you on the other side. Whereas if you can filter that wind through a variety of different plants, you'll have a much more long-lasting effect. And the other beautiful thing about that, well, it means you get more plants. The world is an incredibly big place and there are so many plants to choose from. There are hundreds of thousands on the planet and in Australia alone there are tens of thousands. So next time you think you've got a spot too extreme to grow a plant, don't give up. You need to think like a plant, work out what environmental niche you are trying to fit and you will find the perfect species for you.